The less techie things get, the more personal you can make it. Yeah, and that's sure. what I strive uh, yeah. to have everything be as personal as I can. You know, clients automatically become like family. Yeah. Every deal I work and negotiate as if it was my own dollars on the table. Welcome to Success Superstars, your place for inspiration, motivation, and the keys to success in real estate sales. Camille, welcome. Thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate you having me on this morning. You're welcome. Episode 129 here, and so glad to have you. Now, you've been licensed, what, just about a year? A little over a year, yes. And uh, four million in sales later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty phenomenal year. That's a lot of success. We'll, we'll unpack that in a minute. But what did you do before real estate? I actually ran my own direct selling candle business for about nine years. Right. And I am a was and still am a stay-at-home mom to my three young boys. Um, and I just love it. And I love, love being able to serve other people. So, yeah. you know, it was great transition. So tell me, how, how did you, obviously with the direct sales, you, you had a, a sales talent, I did. but how do you manage, you know, being a mom, you know, being a wife, uh, running a business, you, you know, and, and all that during COVID, yeah, I'm sure you're probably having to homeschool or one of those kind of things, right? How do you manage all that? Lots of wine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, that works. No, you know, I'm, it really just starts by just daily, daily prayer um, is really how I get through the day, but Schedules, um, they're changing so frequently, but right. prioritizing what needs right. to be done that day or that week is really, it's the best I can do. You know, we're all just trying to put our best foot forward, right. um, one foot in front of the other and just continue to push on. Yeah. Now, obviously over the last year, m moving into real estate, I mean, why, why, why did you, okay, all of a sudden I've got this direct sales business and I'm going to go into real estate sales. Did your husband think you're crazy? You know, he did um, at first. He he always has supported me. There was one point uh, when I was in school last year, last spring, he looked at me and he said, do you have any idea how many realtors there are in the DFW? And I swear, I looked him dead in the eye and said, I don't care. There's only one Camille Marin. Oh, and, there we go. And he just, he said, okay. And God just had put it on my heart to switch paths, pull me out of my comfort zone and to serve right. my community in a different way. Uh, I'm going to real estate. So I put all my faith in him and, uh, Ended up three months later with school, finished, passed my exams, and licensed and ready to go. And, and off you go. Yeah. And, and so that is a good point. I mean, there is about one agent for every 50 households or some crazy number yes. like that. So how have you differentiated yourself? How have you distinguished yourself to do such an amazing number in your first year? I think in the beginning, um, I really just wanted to make a name for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I quickly just became the negotiator. Everybody knew mm. me as the negotiator. Um, they knew that was my strong suit. They knew that's what I did and what I did well. And my clients just really flocked to that. Um, aside from being able to negotiate, obviously, real estate contract um, in terms, they really developed trust. Um, I really feel that clients in my sphere have to be able to trust mm -hmm. uh, the agent that they're working with. And um, so that was my focus was just to instill that from the beginning, knowing that I could be trustworthy and loyal. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite quotes in the absence of trust, there's only fear. Amen. I love that. Right. In the absence Fabulous of quote. trust, there's only fear. Yes. So you're able to establish trust and you've established yourself, which is one of the things consumer tell us, they value the most in the real estate relationship is an expert negotiator, right? All, all the information's online, right? Right. But, but the negotiations of the transaction and putting a transaction together, that's where you earn your dollars. Right. Yeah. Right. And I don't, I don't quite think people understand the level of negotiations and the level, the different tiers that go into a real estate transaction. It's not just right. about getting a home for a certain price. There's so many different steps and it really is, you know, somebody, that sees it start to finish and that mm -hmm. can walk you through every step um, and make it as seamless as possible. Right. And so many folks don't realize that it's the mortgage is, is almost just as important, if not as important as the home. Right. right? I mean, both of them are, are big uh, financial components if there's a mortgage on the home. Right. So what have you discovered over the last year? H have you ever wanted to like quit? Always. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's been several times, but you know, I have learned to just be unbreakable. I've learned to 
you're always going to get knocked down. That's right. just life, no matter what you do, what you come across. But the answer is always getting back up. And I find that there's so few industries and so few professionals that do get back up. Mm -hmm. And when they get back up is when they become stronger and more resilient. And I love a good challenge. I love every single deal right. because it brings on a new challenge. So did you learn that as part of your real estate practice or is that something that you learned as growing up? It was something I learned growing up to always get back up when you're knocked down. I will say one thing I have learned and developed in my real estate career is that there's always something different that will knock you down. It's mm -hmm. almost as realtors, it's almost like we get hit from every single angle mm -hmm. all the time. Right. And you never know what's coming, but you have to be prepared and you have to be able to take it head on. And that's what I do. Right. Yeah. So speaking of having curveballs thrown at you, and still performing and doing $4 million of sales, you had in the midst of this first year of surgery. I did. And you overcame that. Uh, how? I mean, had, you know, most people would just give up and put everything on hold and their business would go down the tubes and then you'd have to rebuild, but you did something different. I did. I, um, I found out that I had a tumor in the fall of 2019, right after I had started. Mm -hmm. And um, after the first of the year, COVID hit, mm -hmm. you know, so I had to kind of put that on the back burner. But it's such a somber time to find out that you have a malignant tumor that I choose to see the joy in everything. Right. So I knew because I was walking with God and that he was going to be there. I didn't need to focus my energy and time on that. God had already solved that problem. Right. So I kept looking forward. I kept pushing, kept going. We were ch facing challenges in this industry of COVID, mm -hmm. uncharted territories, I think for everybody involved. Right. And my clients needed me. So that's where I needed to be. I didn't pay much mind to anything else going on. And so when I got word that the doctor was finally able to push me to the top of the list to get me in for surgery, um, suddenly my schedule cleared. It was very strange in the middle of the summer, mm -hmm. middle of the chaos, my schedule opened up and I was able to have my surgery, able to recover. I still was working from bed, you know, because right. we never stopped working. We right. always got our phones, you know, in the recovery room and, and uh, laptops, but I was able to rest and I was able to heal right. quickly. A lot of support, a lot of prayers. And I was able to hit the ground running back up again in just four weeks. Yeah. What an amazing story. Now, um, Obviously, your approach, I hear through you talking that you're a servant leader and you serve your clients where they're at. I was thinking, you know, um, consumers only sell a home maybe once every seven years, right. but you get to work on it every day. So how, how do you help the consumer have a better experience? So I find that this is buying or selling a home is very different for a lot of people. And it can be scary because they don't do it all the time. Like you said, Mark, right. I do this day in and day out. I'm really good at negotiating and I know the contract. And those are really the things that right. consumers don't. Right. So they put their trust in me because I'm able to break it down in a way that they understand. So for instance, you have a first time home buyer, you know, I love first time home buyers, right. you know, cause they're so excited and I get to actually almost hold their hand and walk step by step with right. them. And, um, but I always ask my clients to put their trust in me because I put my trust in the Lord. Got it. So in your first year, you, you know, you've, you've obviously had to generate leads and make contacts. How, how are you generating the business? You know, I, from the day I started my business, I'm, I've always just worked by referral. I'm really big in my community and networking, and I love to meet new people. Mm -hmm. I love to serve and be a part of church and my, my boys' baseball teams, right. um, schools, PTAs, things like that. I'm just, I have that giving heart and that giving spirit. And I think just by people knowing me, right. that automatically, you know, kind of builds that trust there. And, um, you know, statistics showed that anytime somebody goes to buy or sell a home, they know on average about eight realtors mm -hmm. in DFW. But when it comes time for them personally to make that decision to hire a realtor, only two names come to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So having that trust factor and knowing that somebody is there for you right. and looking out for your best interest is really where I want to be. Yeah. yeah. It comes back to really being in a relationship Correct. with your 
a client base. Yeah, yeah. I, I love building relationships. I love cultivating relationships. Yeah. I'm very old school at heart. I still hand write cards and notes. Right. Um, you know, I just, I absolutely love um, meeting, like I said, meeting new people and learning about other people. I find there's so much out there to learn and know. Right. Um, and it's not just a real estate transaction to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it, about that relationship. It's about the relationship. We have a, a mutual uh, love of baseball. My boys were all baseball. Uh, one of mine, his nickname was Iceman nice. on, on the field. So, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I spent a lot of time behind the plate. He should meet my Maverick. Yeah, there we go. Iceman, <laughs> Iceman and Maverick. Uh, well, so speaking of challenges, you know, during COVID and uh, building relationships became a little harder. How have you adapted? Uh, you know, maybe it's Zoom, maybe it's FaceTime, maybe it's more handwritten notes. Yeah. How, how have you adapted during this uh, COVID period? You know, I really, during the COVID period, I... Um, I really set my focus on serving people. Hmm. I wasn't really focused about real estate um, or transactions or deals or lead generation or anything like that. I was focused on being a servant where it was needed. So for instance, you know, community that maybe somebody needed toilet paper. We all remember the great yeah. toilet paper shortage of 2020, right? right? That's kind of like houses are right now. It's, it's the <laughs> right. same, there's not enough inventory. Right. So, it, you know, I'm being able to put together uh, COVID bags that had waters and toilet paper, paper towels, mm -hmm. things for kids, you know, kids, this was uncharted territory Co for kids. Coloring books or things activities, for kids. right. Right, being there to uh, provide those kinds of things to neighbors and the community uh, was, was really what my focus was. Right. And not so much about leads or, you know, like I said, anything like that. Uh, being part of the church, uh, we serve the, the elderly. So this was a very scary time for those who couldn't go out or didn't want to risk going out. Right. You know, we would go and get groceries, uh, get whatever they needed right. um, and bring it to them. So that that's where my focus shifted was how can I serve? Right. Um, how can I serve my community better and how can I help others? And then that naturally led to uh, natural people who had needs and if you had trust. And yes. Now, do you use a, a, a CRM? Do you use a system to keep track of your database? Uh, have you created a database? How, how does that work? I have one. Yeah. I am not tech savvy at all. Oh, so <laughs> that know. surprises me. It, it surprises um, a lot of people, including my husband. Um, being my age <laughs> and not being tech savvy, right. I'm very old school. Very old school. I do have a CRM. Yep. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Brian Buffini. Um, I have his CRM and I love it. Refer but referral maker. Referral maker. Okay. Yes. Um, but, but I'm, you're, st I'm still very old You're still school. very old school, but it's working for you. It does. You know, yeah. and I find <laughs> that the less techie things get, the more personal you can make it. Yeah, and that's sure. what I strive um, yeah. to have everything be as personal as I can. You know, clients automatically become like family. Every yeah. deal I work and negotiate as if it was my own dollars on the table. Yeah. I, I like that you said that because in today's world, sometimes I think we've relied too much on tech. Absolutely. To, you know, let's automate everything. Let's make it all, you know, set it and forget it. Right. Well, and when you set it and forget it, there's no relationship. It's taking, it's making it easy. It's taking the work out of it. Yeah. 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 So, well, as we wrap up, what a phenomenal year. What a su phenomenal success. Thank you for sharing your story Thank you. Uh, with the audience. I know that'll motivate others who are, you know, following in your footsteps and looking to you now as, as a role model. Um, well, it's so my honor and privilege to share. And I've always said that if my story or my experiences can help or impact one person, I've done my job. Yeah, that's awesome. So as we wrap up, any last words of uh, wisdom or thoughts that we share with the audience? I would say that place God above everything, mm. pray about every deal, stay true to who you are. Don't mold to the, to the norm, to what everybody else is doing and be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. What yes. works in life and business where we're not consistent? Nothing. Nothing. Right. There we go. Yeah. And in lack of trust, there's only fear. Correct. Yeah. Love well, that. there we have it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon on another episode of Success Superstars.